Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back to our kitchen. If you guys watched the last video where we made the bypass barn doors, you will notice that I kind of skipped over the fabrication of the metal bypass hardware. And I skipped over that because it's a pretty specialized thing. There is a ton of barn door hardware kits out there that you can get for a great price. There just isn't something exactly like this, which was my reason for making these. Excuse the lighting, but we've moved out into the garage section simply because I don't want to get all these metal shavings around the shop. And now I'm going to cut all the pieces of the flat bar down to length and the pieces of tubing which I got on the shelf behind me still. I used a couple different sizes of 8 inch flat stock, 2 inch tubing to make all of the pieces for this barn door. The 3 quarter inch pieces of flat stock that I'm cutting here are actually for the top rollers that attach to the top of the barn doors and have the wheels that roll on the U-channel. We also have several inches of 2 inch flat stock and that is for the vertical sections and the part that actually bolts into the wall which is welded to the 2 inch tubing which acts as a standoff to hold the whole channel assembly away from the wall allowing the bypass barn doors to slide past each other. Here I've actually finished one of the standoff brackets. It has a 2 inch piece of steel in the back that has some miters on the corners that bolts to the wall and then the two inch section of tubing that acts as a standoff that has a little cap on it. At the drill press I drilled several different through holes for the sections of one and three quarter inch that go into the top of the doors, the two inch verticals that actually hold the pulleys that slide on the channel, and then finally two holes into the sections that bolt into the wall. A couple strokes with the file to make sure I didn't have any burrs on those pieces. I used the cutoff saw at first to cut the mitered angles, but then I found it was a little bit easier to use the cutoff wheel. Here I'm actually cutting the rounded pieces for the vertical sections that hold the pulleys so that you have a nice profile matching the rounded profile of the pulley wheels. And then it was time to weld it all together. I do understand that not everybody is going to have a welder. I didn't have one either up until this project, but this was an assembly that doesn't exist as far as I can tell. If you don't want to do this, there are tons of assemblies that you can get on Amazon and even at your local home centers. And here you can see me welding the heart of the entire assembly. It is a 2 inch piece of channel and this allows me to get both of the doors very close together which is not something that you can find on assemblies that are readily available on the market. And of course a little bit of grinding to make those welds look a little bit better and then I hit them all with a wire wheel to shine them up nice and bright. To mount the channel assembly directly onto the standoff brackets, I drilled and tapped a hole and then bolted it directly into place, not having to use any nuts. A couple coats of black rattle cam paint and we are ready to go. If you would like to see more of this assembly and of the barn door build, check out the link in the description below and up in the cards there and that will take you directly to last week's video where we built these bypass barn doors. This video has been made possible by Sawblade.com, whose Trajan Q700 I've been using to cut up the metal for this project. When Sawblade told me they were going to be sending me this cutoff saw, I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than this, so I actually laughed when I took this thing out of the box, but holy smokes was I wrong. 
This thing packs a punch, cuts through mild steel like absolute butter, and the blade that's on here is stainless steel rated, so I'm curious to try to get some stainless steel on this thing. If you order a Q700, you will get two stainless steel rated blades. This mini saw, which is perfect for storing up on the shelf and grabbing when you need to cut up some metal. Make sure you visit sawblade.com for all of your wood and metal cutting needs. Well, that is a wrap on the custom barn door hardware. That was my first welding project on this channel. Super fun. That was also my first time MIG welding. I have stick welded a tiny, tiny bit in the past, but that was super awesome. Super happy with how this thing turned out exactly how we wanted everything, which was the reason for going with the custom build versus buying one of the many kits that you can find online today. I hope you guys enjoyed that first welding project. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button right over there so you never miss when we upload a new video. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one. And that was actually my first time MIG welding. I have a tiny bit of experience with TIG welding, but that was certainly a lot of fun and quite a bit easier. I just said TIG welding again. That was actually my first time MIG welding. I have a tiny bit of experience, experience stick welding. What the hell?